The gospel is good news, but for there to be good news, there must first be bad news, and there is indeed bad news, a lot of it. All of us are sinners. God has given his given us his moral code, the Ten Commandments, his standard of goodness. And there is none righteous, not even one. There is only one who is good, and that is God, because God defines goodness, not you and not me. God's standard of goodness is perfection. His standard of goodness is himself. And all of us have broken God's laws. Thou shalt not lie. Have you ever told a lie? Of course you have. Because all of us have. All of us have told lies. And so all of us are liars. I'm a liar. You're a liar. Thou shalt not steal. Have you ever taken something that does not belong to you? The value of what you take is irrelevant. If you've ever taken something that doesn't belong to you, you are a thief. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't let yourself off the hook too quickly because Jesus says if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. If you've ever looked at another person with lust, you are an adulterer. Go, that's just three of the Ten Commandments. Go through them. Dear friends, we have all broken God's laws thousands of times. We are sinners by nature. We are sinners by choice. We are sinners by action. And just like when you break laws on earth, there is a penalty to be paid. How much more so when we break the laws of God? But because we have sinned against God who is eternal, the punishment of that sin is also eternal. And if we die in our sin, we will very rightly and very justly go to a very real place that the Bible calls hell, where the worm will not die, the fire will not be quenched. There will be wailing, weeping, gnashing of teeth. That is what your sins have earned you. If you die in your sin, you will go to hell and the full undiluted fury of the wrath of God will be poured out on you day and night forever and ever and it will never end. Eternal torture. And you may be thinking, well, that sounds so harsh. Remember who it is against whom we have sinned. God. Because we have sinned against God who is eternal, the punishment is eternal. Because we have sinned against God who is infinite, the punishment is also infinite. And a lot of people think erroneously, well, well, God is a good God. And, and because he's good, yeah, I may have done a few things wrong, but he's a good God, and so he'll let me off the hook. That's not how the goodness of God works. In fact, that doesn't even work in a court of law here. If, if I were to be arrested because I um, robbed a bank and shot the clerk, killed someone, you know, serious crime, and I fled the scene, but the, the law caught up to me, and I was arrested, I had my day in the court, they played the tape, security cameras were on, of course, and so all the evidence is there, it's laid out, and I am found guilty. And the judge says to me, uh, right before I'm sentenced, he says, Justin, you've been found guilty by a court of your peers, you, com you committed robbery and you committed murder, do you have anything to say for yourself before I pass judgment? What if I were to say, well, well judge, I think you're a good judge. And because you're good, I think you should let me go. You see, judge, I've only killed one person on one day in my life. I'm 51 years old. I've lived thousands and thousands of other days, and I've never killed anybody on any of those other days, just one person on one day. And so I think, you know, my, my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds. And yeah, I may have done a few bad things, but overall, I'm a good person. My, my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds. And so I think you should let me go because you're a good judge. What if the judge said, huh, well, that's interesting, Justin. I've never really thought about it that way. Uh, yeah, I am a good judge. And so, uh, yeah, your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. And so you're free to go. We'll see you later. Have a nice day. And I'll walk out the door. Would that be a good judge? Of course not. It would be a terrible judge, right? Because a good judge must punish crime. God is the ultimate good judge, and he must punish sin. If he does not punish sin, then he would not be good. And so many people are counting on the goodness of God to get them off the hook. 
but it is the goodness of God that will seal their fate. God is good, and he must punish sin. And if you die in your sin, God will punish you for all of eternity. And there's no escape. And there's no amount of good works that you can do to overcome the sin debt that you owe to God. Just like in my courtroom example, I couldn't say to the judge, well, judge, tell you what, I'll go work at the soup kitchen for a few weeks. And I'll, um, I'll volunteer my time at Habitat for Humanity if you'll let me off the hook. Wouldn't work, right? Certainly not going to work with God. Our works, the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 64, our works are as filthy rags before a thrice holy God. You're not going to impress God with your piddling little good works. So we stand condemned, and there's nothing that we can do to earn God's favor. So God has made a way of escape. God has made a way for, it, for us to escape his own wrath. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. And Jesus was and is the God-man. Jesus was one person with two distinct natures, truly God, truly man. And as the God-man, Jesus lived a perfect life. He never broke any of God's laws. Because he was human and is human, he could, he could stand in our place and take the punishment of our sins that we deserve. Because he is divine, because he is deity, he could live that perfect life and have perfect righteousness. So Jesus gave his perfect life on the cross. His life was not taken, he gave it. And on the cross, this perfect person offered his perfect life as a perfect sacrifice to perfectly satisfy the perfect wrath of God. Died on the cross, three days later was bodily raised from the dead, proving himself to be who he said he was, God in human flesh. And the only way to be saved is to repent of sin, turn from sin, and place your trust in what Jesus did on the cross. There is salvation in no one else. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You will find salvation nowhere else, only in Christ. And it must be, dear friends, let me say this, it must be the right Christ, the right Jesus. There are a lot of different Jesuses out there. The Jesus of Mormonism is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of Buddhism or Islam, Muslims believe in Jesus, that is not the Jesus of the Bible. And I'll be honest, the Jesus of Roman Catholicism is not the Jesus of the Bible because they do not believe that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. But that is exactly how salvation comes. By grace, through faith, alone. No mixture of works. If you are trusting in your works at all for your salvation, then you do not know Christ. But if you will come to Christ empty-handed, lay your works down. They will profit you nothing. Come to him empty-handed. Believe in Christ. Believe in the gospel. Place your trust in him. And come to Christ seeking not only a Savior from hell, which is good. You should want a Savior from hell. But just as much as we should want a Savior from hell, we should want a Savior from sin. The person who wants a Savior from hell but not a Savior from sin has a Savior from neither. Does your sin grieve you? It's not enough to just acknowledge, yeah, I'm a sinner. But do you understand what that means? Do you understand what your sin is? Do you, under, do you grieve over your sin? You see, our sin grieves God. We know that from Ephesians chapter 5. Our sin grieves God. And we should not want to grieve Him. God has been so good, so kind, so faithful, so patient, so merciful towards us that when we sin, it grieves us. Does your sin grieve you? Do you want a Savior from your sin? And if you do, come to Christ. Cry out to Him. Ask God to forgive you. Confess your sins before Him and place your trust in Christ. And if you will come to Christ empty-handed, seeking Him, 
He will save you. You will pass from death to life. God will take out the heart of stone, put in the heart of flesh. He will give you new desires, new affections. One of the surest ways you can know, most everybody goes through a time when they doubt, am I truly saved? Am I truly a Christian? One of the surest ways you can know that you have a new relationship with the Savior is if you have a new relationship with sin. If you're truly a Christian, your sin will grieve you. If you're truly a Christian, you will desire what God desires. You will love what God loves. You will hate what God hates. So do you have a new relationship with sin? Does your sin grieve you? Do you desire to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you desire to grow in holiness? Do you desire to grow in purity? Do you desire to live a life fully to the glory of Christ your King? Do you have these desires? Do you have a love for the God's Word? Do you have, do you have a love for the brethren? Do you have a love for other Christians? Do you have a desire to be in church? These are all hallmarks of the regenerate heart. And if you're not certain that these things are in your life, maybe you made a decision as a kid. Maybe, like me, I was seven years old and I prayed the sinner's prayer and I got baptized, but I wasn't saved. I wasn't saved. A lot of you, a lot of you watching me right now, maybe that's you. You prayed a prayer, you got baptized when you were a kid, but there was never any change. Has there been a change in your life? You cannot go from being dead in trespasses and sins and alive to Christ and there be no change. The miracle of the new birth is just that. It is a miracle. So if you're not certain, the Bible says examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. If you're not certain, get real honest before God. Cry out to Him. Confess your sins. Come to Christ empty-handed, trusting Him and Him alone. And he will save you. Jesus says, the one who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out.